So in this video, we're going to look at how to dress for weddings. Uh, it can be a, a mindful sartorially, but we're going to show you how to dress and some great outfits. So this is what we call morning dress and is traditionally what is worn at a English wedding. I have a very basic question. So this is morning dress. Yes. Is also, could you also call it tails? Yes. Okay, so it's the, those terms are sort of interchangeable. You could call it, you you often call it a uh, morning a morning. This is a morning coat. Okay. Um, it's also known as a morning dress or morning tails. Okay. You could call it tails, but I certainly wouldn't put tails on an invitation because you could confuse it with evening tails. I mean, the key item is is the coat. Okay. Usually black. It's usually with one buttons with the the link button and a relatively wide peak lapel. And this is a structured garment. You do occasionally see on models post-war around the 1950s, a small pocket on the right-hand side, like a ticket pocket, mm -hmm. but not for weddings. That's more for if you're wearing it for Royal Ascot or the races. But that's, I'm okay. being seriously archaic there. A morning coat doesn't have side pockets. It takes a chest pocket yep. for your pocket square, a, a structured shoulder, and the fronts are cut away. Yep. So, and the jacket is traditionally black, or I'm guessing it can be a sort of dark charcoal. Dark charcoal or... is, it was also classic, but nowadays you'd expect it to be in black. Okay. And, and then you have, you wear that with a separate colored waistcoat, dove grays, pale blues. I've seen people get very, um, take a lot of liberties. At least in, from my eye, it seems like people can take a lot of liberty. It depends. I mean, I think we're going to reference a very famous film, probably about four weddings and a funeral, which probably it's probably most Americans referenced when they think of morning dresses yeah. when, they, when they see it, it's in, it's in cinema. There was a fashion, what, from the 90s to have sort of dandyish waistcoats. Yeah. Don't see it so much these days, but I think because like, everything it becomes fashionable and it becomes seen as unwanted, like, you step away from it. But you do sometimes see brocade silk waistcoats, which I think can be beautiful. And I'm almost, because they're so not worn, I'm kind of, it's been quite subversive. I think it can be quite fun again, but it, uh, you need to have a big personality and confidence to wear that as a wedding guest. I absolutely love and I suggest if you want to wear a morning dress, this is how you'd wear it, is to have a separate starched collar rather than a collar attached shirt. They're not relatively expensive, but they do look extremely smart and elegant and create a real focus point for it because you've got that structure to the collar, mm -hmm. which complements the structure of the coat. And it's probably a little hard to see behind the tie, but the, the shirt just has regular mother pearl buttons, no studs. It's just a classic. It's a it's a it's a it's exactly shirt. the same yeah. as a traditional sort of German street shirt. Okay. Long tails, bust on the front. Yeah, yeah. I mean this one in particular has a double front. So there's double layers of fabric at the front, like a bib, to give it stronger colour contrast. And um, talking about other starch elements of this, I, I don't know what you would call it, but the insert beneath slips. the slip. When I first got into trade in the 90s, they would only be seen bespoke. You can now buy them ready-made in German Street. And what's the purpose the and purpose, how did they, they stay have, attached? They attach, they are a strip of fabric which you attach by buttons inside your waistcoat. And it just creates a very smart border that you don't notice straight away, but it's a sign of someone who's very confident. I only really like to wear slips if I'm wearing a starch collar. Okay, and then what about pocket squares? Uh, is there a rule with that or should it just be complementary to the overall colors? Again, this, I'm going, again, it's a general wedding territory. Is I yeah. would wear my pocket square to complement my overall outfit and not to match anything. I think a morning coat screams out for a pocket square because you've got so much black otherwise. Yeah. And it just needs it to break it up. Even if you wear as a a flat white like you would for black tie perhaps, like a flat squared linen, I've worn that before. Or I just like a, a complementary colour. These sort of, you know, you've got the blues and the beiges in here, which sort of hint towards the vest and the, and, and the, uh, and the shirt. Ties traditionally can be very fine printed or very fine woven. So you don't really wear bold ties. But again, like the waistcoat affects your personality it comes through. It's not It's not necessarily a uniform, it's more of a mode of dress. I think one of the most popular questions I've been asked over the years about uh, dressing for weddings, particularly for morning dress and um, other outfits, is can I wear a flower in my lapel 
and a pocket square and you have read it in certain fashion books i use the term loosely that you don't wear both you don't wear both it's too busy absolutely disagree um i think weddings are one of the few times sadly nowadays a gentleman can wear a, a flower in his lapel because it's such an elegant touch but black morning coat it just breaks up the vastness of it and i just think it, it if you have a a flower and no pocket square it draws your attention to an empty pocket and it looks quite sad if you if you have a very elaborate flower i wouldn't go with a very elaborate pocket square it might be fighting for attention you might go for something more simple but it's like i'm wearing like a white linen with a, bit of a border but really no you wear both okay and as we're talking about accessories i think we have to talk a little bit about headwear hats do you wear a hat with this look top hat Top hat. Okay. Um, but as, again, going back to tradition, is you get married in a church, you're either carrying it, yeah. or you have it for photographs. Yeah. Um, as a guest at a wedding now, I would say you don't need a hat. Is there any other, anything else that we should talk about in terms of how to pull this off? Yes, definitely. Don't wear jeans, I'm really sorry. Ugh. And cowboy boots is probably a no-go Cowboy boots, actually. I'd say cowboy boots before jeans. Okay. But if I can't wear cowboy boots, what am I wearing then? Um, or if I can't wear jeans, I apologize. They call them cashmere stripes. Okay. So this is what we call a cashmere stripe. The word cashmere is a uh, based on the word casimiri, I believe, which was a 19th century expression for a fancy worsted. I've seen these striped trousers come in so many different variations of stripe and width and... and yeah. It, does it matter? Is there a rule around that? I think how for, is one to choose if I would they're say, having a suit made? No, for, for for weddings and that's got people go for more of a silver grey. Okay. If I'm dealing with someone who comes to me for advice and they need, they're wearing it in a more sombre situation, as some people do, if they're wearing if they're wearing morning dress and they more like to wear it for a funeral or they're wearing it as part of their profession. Um, they'd probably go for darker stripes, a bit more somber. And I guess the only other thing we haven't really covered, I'm looking down right now, is I'm thinking about shoes. Boots are Black. okay. We, we said cowboy boots are okay, but if you don't have cowboy I boots, think, I think if you turn up, if you turn up for a wedding in, in this outfit yeah. and a pair of black cowboy boots, you think, yeah, that's cool. I, I think, yeah, yeah. in fact, in fact I that's just, I it. just need an invitation now. We'll just do a photo, <laughs> we'll just do a photo shoot. Yeah, fair enough. But so what would it be? Uh, black calf Oxfords. Yeah. Um, black calf Chelsea boots are very smart. Uh, punch toe cap Oxfords. I've even seen a very smart black loafer. So yeah, a, okay. a black polished shoe is always smart. So Austin, I guess this is a, a similar outfit to what you wore to your own wedding. You are correct. Uh, I wore a tux to my wedding. A what? A tux. A tux, a as in a tuxedo. Okay. Yeah. Is that what we know as a dinner jacket? It'd be the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, mine was double-breasted, um, and I really, I, I sort of debated between going black tie or just, you know, wearing a very nice lounge suit, but okay. I wanted to, I, I was practicing law at the time, and I wanted to wear something that I didn't normally wear. I was, of course, wearing suits to the office every day, so I wanted to sort of, you know, elevate that a little bit, so I chose a tux, and I toyed with the idea of doing a morning attire, but I just didn't know enough about it at the time, and also that would have been very hard for I think the other you know guys in the wedding party to sort of get behind as well. And there aren't that many offerings in the states where you sure. can I think get this good is much morning more attire available. advice. Much more available. Okay, traditionally in the UK, you would if the if the event happened to go into the evening, guests would change from their day wear into black tie, mm. which is a lovely thing to do. I applaud that, but that isn't always possible at every wedding to have yeah. that logistically if guests are traveling and they're, they're going, you know, and they're staying in hotels nearby, to have a second event of an evening in black tie isn't, so to, you have to dress for one. Yep. And if, if if the evening party is where your heart is, that's that's where you should dress. And like I said, it's, even, it's easier, I certainly think, for most men I know, if they saw the dress code as black tie and they instantly know what it is, because they, they've been to a black tie event, whether it's a works party or an award ceremony or, just in life, most men haven't worn morning dress. It is a certain sector of our society that has access, that lives that type of lifestyle. If you're in the market for just a classic dinner jacket, what would you advise in terms of details, style? Okay, I would say black barathea mm -hmm. with um, black matching facing, um, single or double breasted, depending on what you prefer. If it is single breasted, 
certainly only one button. Mm -hmm. I think one button is better. Double breasted four or six. Um, side vented or eventless mm -hmm. would be the key to it. I prefer, and I would always suggest dinner jackets, not to have pocket flaps. I like to have a jet pocket trimmed in the same material mm -hmm. as the lapel. Uh, I like the button on a single breasted to always be cloth covered to match the lapel. On double breasted, I like both. I, don't, I, li I like a, a cloth covered, but I actually think a black bone in a polished black bone can also look very elegant. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, always a classic chest pocket and always, always um, a pocket square. I think because it's such a, an expansive black, it breaks it up. It just looks so smart. A white linen fold is always correct. I mean, this is one of those classic elements of sort of bringing someone's eye up, right? Exactly. Towards the face. Exactly. It's all black, yeah. but you have this little pop of white in the a chest. Little pop, it's just, it just gives it a little bit, it just gives you um, a little bit of structure to the outfit. Um, so white is always smart, but really in a black and white outfit, you, you can't go wrong. If you've got, I mean, this is opportunity. So if you've got a, a favorite pocket square, you should perhaps struggle to wear with a black, with, with, for, for daily wear, but you just love it because it's a little bit overpowering. Now's the time to bring it out because you, you can in the evening, yeah. a flash of color looks lovely. And you can, you, know, you don't have to be flamboyant with the fold. You can just show a small amount of it, but it's a, it's a nice element. The only other element I really like for a bit of color is with the sock. Mm. Um, I think I never wear black socks, so for black tie, I'd either wear deep, deep, deep red or a purple. Uh, what are your opinions on accessories like studs and cufflinks? And if you have, I mean, obviously, you wear cufflinks because sure. your, your evening shirt will generally be double cuff. Mm -hmm. If you've gone custom, you might have like the cocktail cuff, which is a, an, a, which is a, a fun play on it. You know, if you're going for a, a custom shirt, or if you happen to find a, a cocktail shirt. Uh, for evening, it's a lovely feature as well and negates the need for cufflink. Um, if you have a beautiful set of dress studs, now's the time to wear them, if your shirt takes them. Um, if your shirt comes with dress studs, I mean, I, and it's an option not to wear them, I tend not to. The ones that come free with the shirts aren't that nice. No. And what about m matching your cufflinks to your studs? 100% must yeah. match perfectly. Yeah. So let's talk the trousers. Uh, what are some style details or elements that are proper for a tux trouser? If you're buying, investing in a, in a dinner jacket, you'll need a matching pair of trousers and they will take a single ribbon on the outside leg of braid, which will complement the facing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, they and they have no turn ups or cuffs on an yeah. evening trouser. They can be cut flat front pleated, whatever you prefer but they should sit relatively high on the waist. Should you want to wear a cummerbund, it will sit properly over it. But, but cummerbunds are an option for single-breasted dinner jackets only. So if it's your first tux and you know, you're know you going your first tux, classic, no, no. I would your just first go... Trou your first yeah. trouser is, the, is your matching, yep. but just be aware that you can break up a dinner jacket and wear it with tartan. You can wear things like Glen checks, Prince of Wales checks, or Shepherd's check. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it takes you down to the shoe. And I yeah. think that is where there's a lot more flexibility nowadays with, with footwear. It always used to be, you used to polish up your black oxfords you wore for work, yeah. or if you'd be invested a pair of patents. But I think now we can now get more classic shoes and without having to go bespoke. So you've got things like the velvet slipper, mm -hmm. which is now worn outside of the home. And you can even get pumped again. I love an evening. Do you, what did you wear? So Cowboy I wore boots, patent. No, if I had to go back and do it again, I might. But um, I wore velvet slippers. But I actually, I wouldn't. I wouldn't make that choice. If did you have the I monograms? I did not. No. Um, now I just wear a pair of polished black whole cut Oxfords. Oh, nice. Um, I think they're they're beautiful. I'm not a big. I've only seen one uh, patent patent black leather shoe that I think looks nice for me. They they can look very. Um, Artificial? Yeah. Mm. So guys have some options when it comes to lapel choices with the tux. Not, You've got three yeah. you to choose from. Not as many as with the lounge suit, but you have a peak lapel. Correct. Double breasted or single breasted. Double breasted peak as we have here. Yep. Very classic. You have a shawl collar. I like a shawl collar. I like a, a generous shawl collar. It's more like a smoking jacket. It's like more loose like that. Also, you don't see it as often now, but it's also correct on a double breasted. Mm -hmm. So peak and shawl. Can work for both single or double breasted but never 
a notch is no, the general rule. No, notches get a real bad rep. Um, never double breasted, but a single breasted uh, notch to pearl dinner jacket is not incorrect. It it's might, not incorrect, just not very common. And then the key to it, I think, is the black bow tie. Now, again, we touched on shoes and saying that they're not an essential part. I would say the early stages, put your money elsewhere, but get a really nice bow tie. It's such a focal point. Get one that sits nicely at the neck, reflects your personality. You can get so many different shapes now. You can get square, you can get drops ones, you can get quite elaborate ones like this. Get one which is to tie yourself. If you can't tie a bow tie, now's a good time to learn. Here's a link to a video above to help you learn. Um, failing that, make sure you buy a bow tie which can be unclipped but is also tieable. You buy it, you can get a, the guy in the shop to tie it for you, you can get a friend to tie it for you, it's perfectly tied, then you can unclip it. It will look significantly nicer um, than a ready-made bow tie, even the best ready-made bow ties. You can tell they're ready-made. So make that effort and wear a black bow tie. If you want to add a bit of individuality to it, there's so many other things you can do before the bow tie. So often I think we've agreed that if you're invited to a wedding without a strict dress code, there is an assumption that you'll be wearing a suit with a shirt and tie. I think that's the, the, the safe bet. But I still think as a guest, it's best to dress with a little bit of purpose and yeah. to elevate your everyday, particularly if you're a suit for work, how do you elevate your blue, classic blue business suit into something which is more festive and more, and more like you've made an effort? I think the waistcoat is a perfect way of doing this. This is actually a waistcoat you perhaps normally wear with morning dress, but it just adds a little bit of elegance and extra layer of consideration to your blue lounge suit. Ditto with the little house you've tied and nostrils, traditional wedding wear yeah. and of course a beautiful pocket square. And I think if I saw somebody dressed like that I wouldn't think they were going to an office. No not at all. I think you just look like a very well-dressed wedding guest. Yeah if you're not necessarily a fan of the coloured waistcoat a three-piece suit would also look good but I was just thinking how do you it's just looking different to how you would normally so if the bride and groom know you in a particular way you're, you're portraying a better your best version of yourself. Absolutely. So I think that this is a look that the groom could go for if he's not doing a morning coat or a tux, just oh, much so, a yeah. beautiful, well-tailored blue suit with a vest and a considerate pocket square and tie would see most guys through the most important day of their life. Very much so. I think that's a very a very smart look at it. And then the style of suit, which suits their physique and their taste. So yeah, I think if this was the groom's outfit, mm -hmm. he might need to consider the pocket square as he'd be wearing a flower. It might be a bit much. You might go perhaps a, a flat white or maybe like a something a bit more sky blue into it. So sort of blend it into into the, into the shirt. But other yep. than that, this is a, a great little repair of polished shoes. Nowadays, I think as well, is that the separate jacket can look equally smart. If you haven't got a suit, but you've got a beautiful sports jacket, yep. wearing that for shirt and tie, with or without a waistcoat and a pocket square, looks smart. I think it, it, again, it's about being comfortable in yourself and the smartest version of yourself. So you look like you've made an effort. And smartest, I think, is a key word. Um, I've seen guys wear like chinos with a look like this. That's not smart enough, I don't think, for a wedding. I would go with a pair of tailored, tailored trousers. If you are wearing separates, I would go for a more conservative trouser than say a, a, a more classic trouser. Mm. Something like a, a mid-gray flannel, you can't go wrong with a, with a sports yeah. jacket or blazer. Yeah, and then in terms of shoes? Uh, I would go dark, obviously yeah. well polished if they're calf leather, or something like a, a chocolate brown penny loaf always looks elegant. And finally we have a wedding guest look for a probably summer wedding that you know to be less formal without a prescribed dress code, but you still want to make an effort and be comfortable. I think this is so nice, your classic linen jacket, open neck shirt, nicely folded and rolled at the collar, there's a video on that, check it out. Um, and then the focus square of the focus of the pocket square. Yeah, I mean, without a tie, the pocket square just sort of brings the whole look together. Yeah, I think the pocket square makes it look more considered, and less like I've taken I've taken the tie off. I'm going to pop off the work. Yeah. <laughs> um, key to it also to making I would say this outfit 
would be the trousers. I would go lighter, I'd go yeah. ecru, like a cream, mm. maybe even like a cream linen or a linen cotton blend. Yeah. Maybe a slightly fuller cut, maybe like a Gurkha style would be really nice. Mm -hmm. Something a bit more, less work-like, a bit more playful. And then shoes, really, really important. Um, not your standard brown lace-ups. No. I think you want something with a bit of purpose. Possibly I'll go maybe a Belgian loafer. Mm, that'd look nice. I was gonna say like a sand colored trouser, so not far off cream. And then I don't know the particular name, but I've seen this shoe where it's a nice sort of lighter brown leather with like a cream canvas. Um, oh, like a correspondent. Yeah, maybe. A spectator. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think that'd be kind of fun. Kind of dandyish. Yeah, sockless. We've gone for a blue shirt here. I think I would avoid a white shirt with this just because it would, there's not enough contrast. I think it would sort of wash the wear and I also think the outfit had, out. I agree, if you had the white shirt on and you're wearing the off-white trousers, when you take your jacket off, people are gonna make jokes about cricket. Yeah. Um, all mm. night, which is no fun at wedding. <laughs> um, so I think the blue is a nicer contrast. Mm -hmm. I think if you went for cream, it'd be a bit insipid with the dove gray. Yeah. I think blue is nice, and this has a very light texture, so I think blue with texture looks looks nicer open neck rather than just a flat poplin. Mm -hmm. So thank you for watching. I hope we've inspired you if for your next wedding outfit. As always, the best advice is to dress with purpose, be the best version of yourself and be well groomed and have some fun with it. Um, any questions, put them in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe.